somebody like Mikhail Lesky has got all the physical attributes and the prowess to be world class, like the best front rower in the league, is ready to explode. Here is Oletsky, Oletsky slices through, and Mikhail Oletsky gets over for the try. He's just a genetic freak. I've never come across anybody who's as big, as strong, as fast. He can go as far as he want in this game, because physically, He's got everything. The big plus about Mick is, is his character, is his humility. Boys love playing with him and, and love having his, uh, you know, his real positive nature in the camp every day. Mikolai Oletsky is a huge human being. Oletsky for the Leeds Rhinos. If you just put a character to him, a bit like Aslan from Light like Richard Wardrobe, because he's a big, fierce lion. I don't know, but he doesn't see himself like that when he looks in the mirror. He's a gentleman, you know, he, he, was, he, he was only a kid at the time, but he was a gentleman on the field, you know. No, <laughs> he's rubbish around the house, but he's with Looney, he's absolutely amazing. You can just see how happy she is, which... Uh... I'd, li I'd like to say that I do hover now and then. When we were younger, every summer, you know, we used to spend it all together, all my cousins and... We used to go um, to like a summer house that my grandparents owned, and there was not much there. But um, because we were all there together, we always found stuff to do. And if we didn't, my grandad would make us paint the fence, you know, or <laughs> do some housework. Uh, but yeah, we used to love it. I, I've got great memories uh, from my childhood. It was really good. We didn't really have a choice because we were too young when we found out that we were moving out to England. I never really spoke to my parents about, uh, you know, why we decided to move as I was quite young. and. We live in Gdańsk, where I'm born. We moved to the Warsaw, and uh, I've been seaman as well. I've spent a lot of time on the on the on the sea, and we can't find a place for us. I think the the main one was probably for the opportunities for for those kids uh, to give us a better opportunity to probably excel in in sport or in, uh, academically. We moved over to Kobe when I was about eight years old. Um, and I didn't really know any English, uh, but probably as a young kid, I was a bit just getting on with it, really, and making the best out of a, uh, of a hard situation. When I started in year five, I had a translator, a lovely lady. She just kind of um, went everywhere with me, just followed me everywhere, and uh, she, tra uh, she translated everything for me. I learned how to talk English in two years, which, <laughs> which I had to, but um, which, which is, yeah, pretty good. It's just how we've been brought up to never give up and to just pursue our dreams and all the adversity that we faced when we first moved you know, over to England has taught us a lot of life skills as well and how to manage you know, in kind of difficult or stressful situations. As a youngster I was always into sport and at about six years old my parents took me to um, a diving centre in Warsaw where we lived at that moment in time. It was a three year, three and a half year spell where, as a junior, um, I think my parents wanted me to take it quite serious. First professional is, the, is a diving. He'd been uh, in the Polish champion and uh, remember probably Czech Republic champion as well. You know what is success about three, four years old? She trained very hard, two hours on the mats with gymnastic stuff, after strength stuff and after water. So one hour jumping and jumping and jumping. So, and plus school. And so he had not time for childhood. He uh, was very good in what he did. So this was like, I think uh, for him, a very good satisfaction. Yeah, I managed to uh, springboard my way, <laughs> my way up, up the ranks. Because his mom got a lot of success in the rowing. I was a multi, uh, multi uh, champion of Poland. She pushed him every time. Mikolai don't want to go to train. He was like, "You must go, you must go." I was like soldier. He hated me. He hated me at the start because I was. You have to. You have to. So how many times we drive uh, for training on training? And he was very upset and I said, Mom, I would like to go outdoor, outside and play with kids and have normal life and normal kids. And I said, no, you learned to be special and you have to be the best. And this give, me, give you very nice life and very good life. She, she was a, a role model when it came to, you know, uh, living that 
career in sport and you know being disciplined and training hard and as, as kids we used to wear her you know see her medals uh, whenever she went to championship or competition and uh, yeah probably that's uh, that's where my sporting kind of drive maybe where, where, where they were born I picked up a rugby ball for the first time I'm sure I was 13 years old I think so and I made my debut when I was 18 so it's been five years as kids we used to come down here there's a bike track there and uh, there's a skate park there and the football pitches over there and the rugby field there so as kids we, we always had something to do yeah I had a skateboard I had a bike uh, I think I've tried everything um, that I could ride in that skate park and I'm sure I've seen uh, few lads on the motocross bikes and that skate park so I think there's nothing that skate park I can't see. We're at Fernville um, in Gipton, Fernville Leisure Centre and this is where I had my first training session with East Leeds. I think we're under 13s and believe it or not the pitch was green and it did look a bit more alive than this but um, yeah this is where it all started. It's the afternoon we're going to the park playing football and uh, we see that training the rugby and they've been East Leeds and Nikolai asked me that. Maybe I tried rugby. The next day we're going buy everything, all the stuff for the first training. And that's probably when I realised, you know what, I want to give rugby league a go. So my first memory of him was uh, actually playing against him in a, in a tournament. Just a, I think it was just like a seven-a-side tournament. And Mick being uh, the big giant that he is, uh, he was already a foot taller than everybody then. Talk amongst everyone that there were a, a, a big Polish kid coming. Um, and, and playing against us because East Leeds were already a top team in my age group. He was just that big giant kid who would just, I don't even think he, was, he could speak a word of English at the time. I didn't really have any conversation with him. We were just like the um, the two lads that had really go at it when, it when we was younger. Whenever we played them, we said, right, we're going for Cam. <laughs> we're going after Cam. And yeah, that was kind of the first time we, we, we came together. And you now we went through scholarship together and academy together. And we kind of came through into the first team, similar time. He was a bit earlier than me. Yeah, nothing much has changed, just, he's just uh, developed into a beast. Lee coached him in 13s and 14s, I coached 15s and 16s, so he had a couple of years under his belt before I started coaching him as well. He was willing to learn, I mean, he asked a lot of questions, to be honest, I remember that. Like a sponge really, just wanted to absorb it because he was fairly new to the game. He took balling hard, tackled hard, we kept things simple with him. The first part of my development was well, you know, starting to play at East Leeds and also it was you know, basic skills such as passing, catching uh, and learning the rules. So I'd like to give you this. <laughs> oh, wow, that's all, amazing. All lads' signatures that you played with, I've had it for six years, mate. Thank you can keep it for another six oh, years. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Last time it's a shirt you wore. He was a talent, and he is a talent, that's why he's been successful. I remember the first time that Mick and his mum and dad walked into the building at Kirkstall Training Academy because, obviously, the big physical people, they've got a, they've got a presence. Um, dad, you know, very interested in, in listening to what we were going to say and what we were, you know, hopefully going to provide for his son in terms of a platform, education, support network. You can see from the way that Mick is, he's, he's very family orientated. He's got his own daughter now and that forms part of his motivation like he has seen and, and followed the example of his mum and dad. But my word, his mum shook my hand and shook my hand and squoze the life out of me. And um, I was intimidated, I was intimidated, I won't, I won't mind saying that, but from, from the minute that Mick joined the, the rugby league environment, I've seen him thrive. Right, here we go, Cars versus Leeds at Ellen Road. What a day. Castleford off to a flying start in the opening 20 minutes, 24 mil up they were. 19 years old here, 20 years old. Nearly a minute to go, wait. We need a drop goal and I play it sideways. No, it's a penalty. He's played the played the ball facing the side. Oh, well, that's it, isn't it? I have not seen this in a long time. Oh no. I thought we had a chance to snatch it and just had a needed to have a couple of good moments, a couple of nice plays, and uh, Mick, with one of the most fundamental basics, gets up, plays ball at wrong way, and you're just like, oh wow. And after the game, I was probably a bit scared to talk to uh, Brian Mack, but he said, if I don't get anything wrong, how, you know, how can he coach me? So I was pretty surprised that he didn't scream at me. But <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a big learning curve, and uh, it hasn't happened again since. Touch wood. You can't get angry with somebody like me for too long. You know, it's all part of the learning. And listen, he'd, 
He'd go 10,000 miles, mate, if he had to, to make that little one silly little mistake up. And he has done, he has done. And listen, we'll benefit from it as a club tenfold. We used to have this this uh, this joke in the academy that whoever we played, sometimes you'd say, uh, wow, look at the size of him. And, and we'd all be looking at Mick thinking, Mick, are you bonkers? You're six foot four, 110 kilo, and you're probably his fastest player as well. He's a bit of a natural born worrier in that he can sometimes let a mistake uh, affect him and I think that's one of the big strides in his game is uh, one is his attention to details a lot better, two is gaining in confidence about uh, game time and minutes and, and playing under fatigue. We feel sometimes he can convince himself he's tired when actually he's not and we feel he's getting really the other side of that now. If you look this year, he played 80 minutes again Wigan. I always want to get everything right. Um and I try to get everything perfect, but the truth is I can never get it perfect, all right? So Rich and uh, Longy, I've been trying their best to kind of get me uh, in, a, in a mindset where I can, you know, if I do something not, you know, something wrong, I can drop and move on and I'm getting to a point where I've got a good mindset of whatever happens, uh, move on to the next job. Given the golden generation that we saw, it, that, that itself is very unique for such a core of players to carry a club to so much success over an extended period of time. I think when we look back on the game and the history of the game, I think we'll realise that that, that is a golden generation and, and doesn't happen that much. Such greats left the club, JP, Kev, Rob, Magsy, they've left the club and, and, and we sort of not had the weight on our shoulders that we, the, the club's always got to be great. I don't know how people can cause a transition team. You know, we won the Challenge Cup last year, so yeah, it's it's a bit frustrating. But um, this year, hopefully, we'll 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 uh, we'll turn it around and uh, we'll we'll start making our way back to the top. And uh, people won't, you know, that transition term won't be flying about anymore. Hopefully, I feel like me and Mick are the sort of not see not. I won't say we're, obviously we're not senior players, but we're sort of the eldest of the crop now. Um, and how cool would it be to be able to sit down and have, have an interview or tell our story of how it's gone and uh, hopefully we, we, we've gone in to get the Rhinos back where they need to be. You know, we are conscious of trying to build something that we'll, we'll put in place for a long time. So while, you know, while we're doing it tough at the moment, but we're looking at good players, but guys with terrific attitudes. So we, we look at people like Mick, one of his best mates is Cameron Smith, who has got very what different traits as a player but very sim similar attributes as a, as a human being. Uh, we've got another guy called Tommy Allroyd who unfortunately has been injured at the moment. Uh, we've got a guy called Morgan Gannon coming through and uh, you know, Sam Walters and Jared O'Connor are on the fringe of that. So, so we think we've got a core of a pack that once they've learnt, you know, got the experience, got that sort of 50, 60, 70 games under the belt, which Mick has, uh, spent a couple of seasons alongside guys like Tetevano and Pryor. Uh, we think that is the next generation and the quality of those players and, and as they are as human beings and individuals are all guys that can carry this club forward a long way. Throwing Yari Newman's, probably Ash Hanley's not out of that category just yet. Jack Walker when he gets back. With characters like Mick, God willing mate, he'll be here in 10-15 years time watching another young kid like him come through and, and you know having those memories to be able to empower him to to impress the basics on the next generation as well. I, I've told him I've told him countless times this year that we, we want to get into that England squad together, we want to play in World Cups together, we, um, whatever the top is we want to be there. It was, it was a nice surprise, I just want to kind of play, play my best rugby, play well consistently and uh, I know at the end of the year if, if that you know that happens and that falls into place uh, kind of that will help me with with getting into England squad and uh, and you know hopefully getting um, getting a cap. At the moment, I just want to concentrate on you know playing playing uh, well consistently. My lad playing for the England Knights. Maybe we'll be playing for the first team. <sighs> wow! It's like my dream. This is my dream and his dream as well. To do what he has in such short space yeah. times. Incredible. I can't wait to see where he's going to take himself, where his zenith, where his, his, the heights of his potential uh, are going to take him, having seen where he's come from as a young kid. For me, it's a really gratifying story. If he's doing what he's doing now at 22 year old, it'll be frightening to see what he's like when he's in his elder years and he knows everything there is to know about the game. He could be here for, for the entirety of his career, and how special would that be from a lad from Gdansk?